Hey everyone, welcome back to episode 4 in our beginner scripting series. I hope you are enjoying the series so far. I know I am. It's a lot of fun to make these videos for you. Uh, let's get started with a comment question. What inspired you to want to learn to script? That's today's question. Answer in the comments below. I'd love to hear your answers. And uh, yeah, let's just go ahead and get into today's episode. Today is all about functions and events. So, uh, first off, what is a function? So function is almost sort of like a variable because it's kind of like a box, but this is like box 2.0. Okay. This is kind of like variable 2.0 because you can do, it's like a block of code that you can call again later. So you can store this block of code kind of like the variables, but you can do it over and over again. Something you can do. Like we could, uh, make a function that does all of this property stuff in one function and then we can use it over and over. So let's go ahead and uh, I'm going to show you what I mean by that. Let's enter a script inside of service script service and we're going to call this functions and events. Okay. So let's start out by showing you, I'm going to start out by showing you how to write a function. So the way you do this is by typing function and then the name of your function. We're going to call this change color open close parentheses and drop a line. And you'll notice this is the first time we've seen this thing here, an end. Now, what is this end thing you may ask? And that is basically saying, okay, anything before this end and after this function is part of our function, okay? So anything in between the function and the end is a block of code, okay? It's this change color function. And it's super important that you make sure you have this these parentheses right here. Okay. So we're going to create another part for this function uh, that's just going to change colors, okay? And we are going to go ahead and scale it up like this, okay? We're going to make it big like that, and we're going to call this functions part. All right, let's make sure it's anchored, okay, because that's kind of important. And what we're going to do is we're going to go into this function. Inside of the function, we're just going to uh, find our part, so we're going to make another variable. We're going to say local functions part equals member game dot workspace right we're looking inside of the workspace dot properties part and we can say uh, sorry not properties part functions part this new one and we can say functions part and we're going to change a property dot brick color we're going to do the brick color equals brick color dot random right remember that uh whoops capital r uh and that will just give it a random brick color okay so we could close out of the script and we can hit run and you're going to notice, wait a second, it doesn't do anything. And that's because we never called the function. So this is kind of like saying, Hey, we have this thing that we want you to do, but we never tell you when to do it. Right? I could say, Hey viewer, I want you to go sketch a picture of a penguin. Okay. It's super random. I don't know why that popped into my head. Um, but I could just say that and I could never tell you when, and you're like, okay, well, when do I do this? I have this function ready to be called. I am ready to draw the penguin when you're ready for me, but I don't know when to do it. So to do that, we're going to, again, wait five seconds for everything to load in. And we're just going to say change color again, capitalization, super important, exactly how you had it up here. Okay. You want it to be exactly like this and then open close parenthesis. That's it. That's how you call a function. So it's going to do everything inside of this function in this one line, just change color. That's it. That's why functions are super useful because we can say, wait to change color again, wait to change color again. And we don't have to keep writing these lines over and over. We can just write change color. That's our function. So if we hit run, it should change after five seconds, it, ch it should change its color. Oh, it's crashed again. I don't know why it keeps doing this. Let's try this again. It should change its color after five seconds and do that a few times. We should do it three times total. There's one. There's two. And, oh wow, it shows the same color twice. So, um, there we go. It changed its color three times even though we could only see it twice because it shows the same color, which was interesting. Um, so yeah, that is those are functions. But now, we're going to go ahead and get into something kind of cool. And these are called parameters, okay? So I've created a couple more function parts, and we're going to call them function part 2 and function part 3, okay? So we have all these different parts. We make sure they're all named something different. This one's called functions part. This one's called functions part 2. This one's called functions part 3. By the way, if you don't know how I did that, I just selected one and hit Control d That duplicates a part, and you can click it and click backspace to delete it. Um, and yeah, so now that we have these three differently named parts, um, we're going to go back into this thing 
And instead of having a function or a, a variable, we're going to have a parameter. So inside of these parentheses, we're going to say functions part. And as you can see, now this is no longer under, underlined, and that's because, well, we know that we have a parameter. But the thing is, like a variable, the script won't know what the function part is. So how we do this is we say, here's the parameters we want. We can list any parameters that we want to get inside of our function. Um, and yeah, we can just list them here inside of the parentheses, okay? We have this one called functions part. And basically, this just kind of creates a new variable now called functions part. But we need to tell the script what that functions part is. And we tell it that whenever we call the function. Remember, uh, you're ready to draw your penguin, and I'm telling you now is the time. I'm going to give you info. I'm going to tell you that it needs to be gray, or it needs to be black, or it needs to be white, right? I'm going to give you that extra information. Uh, and those are kind of like par uh, parameters. So inside of this, we have to, um, inside of these parentheses where we call the function, where we tell the script, hey, it's time to do this function we need to tell it what part to do it with. Uh, so for this time, we're going to say game.workspace.functions part. Okay? So we're passing through this functions part right here. We're passing it into this function, okay? And we know that because we're saying change color. We're going to change the color, and we're going to pass through this parameter, which is the functions part, and now when this function is fired, when we pick it up, the script knows this new kind of variable thing, um, functions part, whenever we write that inside of the function, it knows we're talking about whatever we wrote in here. Okay, so that is how we can do parameters. So the reason I made three parts is because in each of these, we're going to put a different one in. So functions part two on that one. And then here we can say game.workspace.functions part three. So we have all three different ones. And if we close out of it and hit run, you should see that they're all going to change to different colors. And all using one function, we can change the color. Oop, hold on. Uh, <laughs> totally realized what I did here. Remove this line too, because we just said, okay, parameter. We made this new parameter called functions part. We made this new variable. And right here, we just set it to be that functions part. So remove this line. In our function, we should only say functions part dot brick color equals brick color dot random. Okay. So now let's try it because now it's saying whatever part we pass through. So whatever part we gave it in this case, the first time it's the functions part one. In this case, it's the functions part two. In this case, it's the part three. So whatever one we told it that time, we're going to change the brick color of that part. I hope that makes sense, but that's basically parameters. And I'm going to show you in just a second how you can do that with multiple parameters. So first part, second part, third part. And as you can see, they have all changed colors. So those are functions for you. Uh, and what if we wanted, for some reason, a different parameter? Uh, we don't really need one for this function, but to do that, you just write comma and then your next parameter. Maybe it's a number. So this time, we can just pass through the number one. Okay, We had a comma after uh, that, where we call the function. We had a comma, and we add our second one. And we just know it's the same order. So if we say the functions part first, that's a game.workspace.functions part, that's the first thing, so that's going to be our functions part. The second thing we pass through is the number one, and that's going to be our number variable. And we can print number if we wanted to. Okay, uh, just make sure you have a number each time. Whoops, one, two, three. And as you can see in the output, when these start changing colors, we're going to start seeing one, two, three in the output. So this is going to change the color, and we can see one, two, Three. All right, so those are functions and parameters. Let's quickly go over events. So uh, actually, we're going to rename this script to be function script, and let's create a new script for events. Scripts. We're going to call this events script. Okay, so there are tons of different events that we can uh, do. But let's just learn one today, and I'm going to show you more over the course of this, this series, and you guys can look up more if you want to. But for this time, we're just going to use this function called player added. So 
the way we do this function or this event, we say game dot players. Remember, we have our game, and then there's the service called players. Okay, and that handles all of the players. As you can see, my player is in it, and it has some events. And if you write dot player added, this is another thing you can do with dots. You can do you can look into things, you can look at their properties, and you can look at a an event. So whenever a player is added, we are going to colon connect function. So this is where things start to get pretty car uh, pretty confusing. Okay, um, so with the events, the way you do this is you write dot player added or whatever event the event is, and then you write colon connect function. Uh, oh, sorry, open bracket function open close bracket, and then you drop a line, and it should create an end with a close bracket for you. So anything inside of this, anything between the end and the function, will happen whenever a player is, has joined the game. Player added. Um, so this is basically saying, hey, whenever a player joins the game, we're going to connect to a function. We are going to start a brand new function. We're going to say, hey, function, let's do whatever is inside of you. That's basically what it's saying. So I hope that's a simple enough explanation. And um, talking about parameters, there are actually parameters for uh, events. Sometimes there are built-in parameters. And in this case, we can see there is a parameter called player. And that is the player that just joined. So we can name this thing, what uh, this variable, whatever we want, this parameter, whatever we want. I like to say PLR or player. And now inside of this function, we can say player dot blah, 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 blah. We can do whatever we want with the player and it's gonna know exactly what player we're talking about. We're talking about the player that just joined the game. So we can print player and then we can have a new print joined the game as a string. So it, uh, it is a game object, so let's actually not do this. Sorry, ignore that. We're just going to say a player has joined the game. And if we hit play, you're going to see in the outputs, if we scroll up, a player has joined the game. And that's because we joined the game. So that is it for events. There are tons and tons of events, um, and we just can't go over them all today. Um, but if you would like to, you can search up Roblox events list. You can Google that and you can just try and find uh, a list of events. So I hope this was a helpful video. Um, again, just like all the other topics, events and functions take a lot of time. So just make sure to practice them because it's really, uh, it just takes time. Just like scripting, just keep practicing and practicing and eventually you'll get it. It took me a long, long time to get functions and events. This was a really tricky topic for me, but after a lot of practice, I am able to do what I can now and make full games with functions. So um, we're going to get into more details with functions in the future uh, in future episodes. And also, I forgot to mention in the past episodes, I always end off my beginner scripting series videos uh, or the series with a video where we make a game. And I just teach you guys how to make a game with everything that we've learned in the series. Nothing advanced. But we're going to make a full game with what you guys learned in the series. So I hope you're excited for that. That's in the final episode. Uh, so make sure you watch all the episodes so that you can be prepared for that. Uh, other than that, if you have any questions, once again, please let me know in the description or leave a comment. I'm sorry, not in the description. Please leave a comment or in my Discord. Uh, you can join that and I can answer questions there. Uh, the Discord link will be in the description. Other than that, have a fantastic day. Enjoy uh, the rest of your day. And I hope that you helped. found this helpful. All right. I'll see you in the next video.